Hey guys, David Saduski here. As you guys know, I was able to generate 18 listings my first three months in the business. Today we're joined with my girlfriend, Bree. She's getting her license in the next few days. So this video is gonna be geared towards people who are looking to learn and grow their business right away like I did. You know, what this job actually entails, how to grow your business and become financially free. Uh, so Bree, why did you decide to get into becoming a real estate agent? Uh, financial freedom and investing in real estate. Yeah, investing guys is, is huge. If you are, if you're an agent and you're looking to invest your money somewhere, it should always be in real estate. You know, our job is geared towards just real estate and, and the knowledge of it. And as my, my professional belief, I believe real estate is the number one way to build financial freedom. It's, it's like part of the American dream. So investing in real estate, whether it be your personal home or investments, your mind should always be geared towards investing in real estate financial freedom also obviously you know we're self-employed so we we have no ceiling we also have no flooring but we can grow our business and our income to as high as we want to make it so two phenomenal reasons what is your game plan you know going into the business if you get licensed next week what's your game plan i mean i know it's tough so you can say i don't know but what's your game plan day one well, I know I would definitely be prospecting. I know that's something I want to do. I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Um, but outside of prospecting, I think that's all I got. So, um, yeah. yeah. No, that's what we're going to talk about is is exactly, you know, day one, she's been taking her uh, studying and taking her tests and, and practicing. And there's you really don't know what to do when you're first day one. So it's totally normal. Prospecting is great. If you guys have watched my channel, obviously prospecting is, is what I mainly focus on. But when I just say prospecting, a lot of people don't know what, what that really means. What does that entail? When, in my opinion, when you're first starting out in the business, I believe prospecting should be done through Zillow. You don't want to dump a bunch of money. You guys have already paid, you know, the, you know, the fees. It's, it's crazy just to take the test, the license, everything. So Zillow is the number one way, in my opinion. If you're day one and you have no idea what to do for your first day, uh, prospecting strictly through Zillow is my way to go, for sale banners in, in particular. So um, you've obviously seen me do some yeah. prospecting. All you guys have to do, for those of you who don't know, go on Zillow, click for sale by owners, and draw a radius around yourself. You have anywhere from 50 to 100 potential listings. If you got 50 to 100 listings in a year, you're, you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. So Zillow for sale banners, that's where I get most of my business from, from a free lead source that's available to anybody. So day one in the business, I would highly recommend sitting down for a couple hours uh, and just calling a few for sale banners. Even if you have no idea, you know, what to say, what to do. Obviously my scripts are linked in my description below. You obviously have them being my, my girlfriend and all, but um, you know, if you have no idea what to say, it's just trial and error. I just made a video where I talk about getting over the fear of cold calling because it's, it's scary as shit, like undoubtedly. Um, but it's just making the calls and getting the repetition. So I think prospecting is a great way to focus your business. In my opinion, talking to a new agent, I, I want to get them geared to what this business is actually about. So a lot of people get in the business, and I had the same thing when I first started out, where I was like, I'm just gonna show homes and sell homes. I mean, it's plain and simple. That's not what I look at my job anymore. My job strictly is to generate leads. That comes first and foremost. That, that is the main thing of the job. If you have no leads, no database, you have no business. So showing homes a second, it's like 20% of the business. 80% of it is sitting down, generating leads, getting people in your pipeline. So you need a plan going into that. Now prospecting is a great way. Again, you don't have to dump a bunch of money in. I use Vulcan 7, you know, people use Mojo. You don't have to dump a bunch of money as lead gen sources. You can strictly do it for free. Um, now, when you are prospecting, what is your game plan from there? Say you get a lead, you know, do you have a database by now? Do you have things like that that you're integrating or not yet? Not yet, no. Okay. So after you guys prospect, I think if you're day one, like literally day one brand new, prospecting is the way to go if you have nothing else to do. Um, but you want to have some sort of CRM system. That's what I mean when I call it a, a database. Um, CRM systems will help you track everything. So once you have a CRM system, I personally use KV Core. A lot of people use Follow Up Boss. Uh, there, there's thousands of them. It doesn't matter what it is. 
you strictly want a place where you're going to put a uh, contact or a lead in, which is just fancy words for a, a person, a human being, and you want to put notes in on these people. Uh, and that's what a CRM system, a digital CRM system, so we're not handwriting everything. You'll have the contact name, the notes for the person. At first, you might be able to have everybody in your head, and most of your database is going to be your your sphere, strictly, mm -hmm. which makes sense. You haven't prospected long enough. If you're prospecting about two hours a day, you're going to be getting, you know, I'd say a lead or two a day mm -hmm. uh, once you become efficient with it. But most of your CRM system, when you're first starting out, again, this is for brand new agents, it's going to be your sphere. Your sphere meaning family, friends, coworkers, whoever. Um, and you want to just put them in there, put notes on them, and then anybody that you guys have in your CRM system, put a task or a to-do or a reminder, whatever it's called in your CRM system, just again, a fancy word for a reminder of a day and time to follow up with certain clients, prospects, uh, people, and what you're gonna say when you follow up with them. My follow-up strategy goes beyond that. It, it goes simply, I prospect, I get a lead, and then it's just follow up and see if they're ready to list with me. Follow up and see if I can set an appointment. Um, so, so what do you say when you follow up with them? Yeah, so it's, it's all different. Um, when I have a lead in, I have a lead that comes in, I, I prospect for leads and I, I talk to them and whatever that conversation, however it goes, if it's, if it's a stellar call and they say, you know, yes, David, I want to, I want to list with you. I want to meet with you and see if it makes sense. Then that, that task or that reminder is simply, uh, talk to them and see if we're still good for the appointment. Uh, other people might be give a neighborhood update. Another person might be call and wish them happy birthday or Merry Christmas. I mean, simple stuff, just touches. You want to touch everybody in, in your database. Um, when, getting back to prospecting, when you're prospecting, because again, that, that is the number one way to build your business, in my opinion. A lot of people think, you know, it's great that you're thinking prospecting because I do prospecting and, and you've seen it work in our brokerage. But a lot of people getting into the business are maybe thinking email marketing or mail campaigns or things like that. These aren't terrible ways to build your business, but it's not the most sufficient and it's not gonna get you 18 listings in your first three months. Um, prospecting is quite honestly the only way to do that. Especially if we're younger, you know, we're in our 20s. And if you're younger like us or, or even in your 30s, you're not gonna have too many people that are just buying and selling right away. So you need to build that network. Um, so really focusing on generating leads is what my biggest advice to anybody getting into the business would be just, that's all you have to worry about right now. Generate leads, get people into your database. Um, any questions, I mean, off of that, I know that's kind of a lot that I threw at everybody there. Well, when you prospect, I mean, like I watched some of your videos and um, are they more based towards getting listings or bringing buyers to properties? Like, Yeah, no, that's a great question. My form of prospecting, and when I say prospect, guys, I want to clear this up. I'm talking specifically about outbound prospecting. There's different forms of prospecting. Prospecting is just talking to people. I mean, plain and simple. We're in a sales job. Our job is simply to talk to people. But prospecting, in my eyes, when I say it, I, I'm talking about outbound prospecting, which means I am actively in control, actively reaching out to people. Now, when I do that, my whole focus is to get listings. For anybody just starting out in the business, listings is where it's at. Um, if you want to be a buyer's agent, you know, so be it. We all have control in our business. But if you want to be a top, top producer, there's only so many buyers you can work with at one time. You can scale up a listing business. If you are listing homes, I can list, I've had like 23 active listings at one point, which is a ton of listings. Imagine working with 23 active buyers. You'll, you'll be driving yourself crazy, driving yeah. everywhere. So um, getting back to your question, when I'm prospecting, I'm prospecting specifically for listings. Never lie, never say you're gonna bring a buyer. Somebody who I don't really follow, who's a well-known coach, Tom, Tom Ferry, has great advice for, for most of the things he says, but some of the things I picked up on is he'll try to say, to say you bring a buyer just to get your foot in the door. I highly don't recommend that. You guys are gonna be going on thousands of appointments if you do that. And they're not listing appointments, they're just, you're meeting people, which isn't the worst thing, but it's not the best thing. Uh, so when you prospect, you wanna specifically go for listings in particular. 
Um, that's what I would recommend focusing your business on. Unless again, if you want to specifically just be a buyer's agent and you're happy and content with that, that's, you know, everybody's got their own thing. Um, but specifically working with listings. Now, when you are, so getting back to the whole outbound prospecting, again, I'm outwardly reaching out to clients. There's other forms of prospecting like inbound prospecting, and that would be classified as, you know, open houses. You are waiting for people to show up to an open house. I think open houses are phenomenal ways to get business. I don't think it's the best, and that's why I personally don't do it for a number of reasons. I'm not the best at them, and, you know, we all have our things that we're good at. I'm not the most you know, energetic, you know, person to, to meet an open house, but um, you're waiting for somebody to come to you and you have to have listings to show them open. If you have a team or a brokerage that's kind enough to give you these listings, that's phenomenal, but you have to have some sort of listing and, and luck that it's a good listing that a bunch of people are gonna come in at. The difference with an outbound prospecting, like cold calling, um, even door knocking, things like that, you're actively in control of who you talk to, who you go after, and you're working on the law of averages. So I know on average, I get one to two leads a day from outbound prospecting. So that's five, six days a week, I'm getting one to two listing leads every single day. Now these don't all convert into uh, listings, obviously, but they convert into my pipeline being filled up and it's a funnel. So I got everybody coming in there and then it funnels out to the people who are actually listing and selling through me. And that is my focus, is just getting as many people in my database and then funneling down, down to who's actually serious about selling and buying right now. You know, some people might be six months or a year away, which is fine. That's why we have a CRM system. We follow up with them. But it's funneling down them down right now into uh, making sure you, you're the most effective with your time. And in my opinion, again, outbound, cold calling, everything like that is, is the way to go. Any questions from that? Um, not necessarily from that, but when you say you get on the phone with someone and they're like, well, why should I list with you and not like someone else or like a different brokerage? Like, what do you say? Like, what makes you different from? No, that's a great, that's a great question. And that's something to focus on when you guys are a brand new agent is what, what's your point of difference? There has to be a value proposition. So no one's gonna list their home with you if there's not a value prop, a proposition. So one way to do that, and this is not a way I recommend, but it's cutting your commission. That could be, in the beginning, your value proposition. I, I do not recommend that strategy because you're just losing money in the long run mm-hmm. and you're discounting yourself. And we're, we're not people who should be discounted. The way I am the best, and I truly believe I'm the best, is because I, even if I had zero experience, because experience will help later on, but when you're brand new, you have, you have no experience. Right. Right. Um, the value proposition I would highly recommend focusing on is your communication. A lot of agents get lazy. You know, I, I can't say I haven't done it before where I'm just like, my 18th listing, listing just came up and it's like, oh great, now let me just go through the motions. I get lazy with it. A lot of people do end up getting lazy with it. And you gotta cut that out. So your value proposition could be you're young, you're hungry, you, you're motivated, you want this, like mm-hmm. more than anybody else. You want this house to sell. This is like you're trying to build your reputation here. Um, your value proposition could be your communication. It's just that is what you are focused on. I'm going to be fully transparent, fully communicative to you. I'm going to tell you everything that I know possible. Also, I've made this known in my uh, other videos. When you're first starting out, I highly recommend joining a team. Bree is joining a team within our brokerage, and it's a very smart idea. If you're just completely brand new uh, and you're out on your own, that's really tough to show your value because you have nobody backing you. Mm-hmm. But now that Brie has a whole team behind her, she can use that experience of that entire team behind her. So highly recommend doing something like that. But you, your point of difference will be simply, you will communicate and fight for this harder than anybody else. And anything that you don't know, because, because of your lack of experience, you can be totally upfront with that, you now have your team lead right behind your back, like telling you everything. You are hungry and motivated to make this your, your livelihood, your, your full-time business. So um, you wanna focus on where the value is. Getting back to I wanna to touch base on something else. When you're prospecting, the whole point of it, you know, I, I don't wanna skim over this, you want to be focused on value. 
we're in a sales job. You don't want to act salesy or right. like that's the worst thing you guys can do. You want to be authentic and true to yourself. But sales to me, all it is, is finding a prospect or client or person who could use your value and services. And if they can't use your value and services, you just move right on to the next person. You want to talk to people who need your value and services. Again, your value is communication, hard work, you're young, you're, you're hungry, you want this. Uh, all those people who are 30 years in the business, they're experienced, they, they know what they're doing, they have a low likelihood of messing up. We can't use this, I'm, I'm two years in the business, I, I can't even use that, I don't have enough experience yet. So uh, when they ask you questions like, what makes you different, why would I go with a new agent? It's because you are so focused on that customer relationship and you quite literally are like the only person they're working with. Like you're going to be so involved with it. So you don't really want to tell them that, but you know, right. that's, you want to give them that image of like from point A to point B, you are there. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. <coughs> um, some other things I, I wrote down some notes here, you know, when you are, so let's go into this, the, your first day, when you get your license Wednesday, that's when you're taking tests. So when you get your license Wednesday, you know, what is Thursday gonna look like for you? My opinion on just an outside looking in from how I run my business, you wanna get set up on a CRM system. You wanna get functioning on your on your CRM. Um, you Once you're set up on that, there's not much else you need to do. I would recommend calling a couple hours. I only call two hours a day and I'm able to generate you know, statistically right around 150 to 175,000 just from prospecting two hours a day, six days a week. Uh, and that's in our market, we're in Cleveland, Ohio. So our market is like 150, $200,000 homes. I think our average sale price is 223,000. So um, in other areas, you know, price points are way higher. But point being, I would focus on strictly prospecting after you get your CRM system figured out, you guys want to study that that is like your livelihood. Your CRM system is everything. You want to be very organized, very detailed in that. Um, I use KV Core. You guys might use Follow Up Boss, but after that, you want to prospect Fizbo's. Once you get comfortable enough with Fizbo's, and this might take three, four months, then I recommend adding in a different lead source of like expireds, threat banners. Through I personally use Vulcan Seven, Mojo, Red X. All these are great services. Those are like the three main ones. Vulcan 7, Mojo, Red X, but that doesn't matter to like three months in the business. Just call for sale by owners, get a few listings, get your, your uh, momentum rolling. Um, you know, prospect two hours a day, get them in your CRM system, prospect some more if you have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Other things you guys can do as a brand new agent, like say Thursday, this, this coming Thursday, you could just, you know, make social media posts. I, I don't, I'm not good at social media. I'm, I'm strictly prospect. I mean, you, you know as well as anybody, I'm terrible at social media, but um, you know, make a post, let people know that you are a real estate agent. Uh, this is something I'm working on in 2024 is not being the secret agent, this like silent ninja agent. I want people now to know, oh, this is what I do and I'm, I'm damn good at it. And like, be confident in that. So uh, do the same thing. People don't know how long you've been in the business. Like right. just, be that person of expertise to everybody in your life. Something you avoid is being that annoying agent that we all know that is like, hey guys, I'm a realtor, you wanna buy inside? I, I'm a, you guys want, that's like, no one wants to work with that lunatic, but be the person that is like, everybody needs to buy, sell, rent, invest. Everybody needs something to do with real estate. We all live in homes, apartments, every, everybody. So everybody is a potential prospect just it might be seven years online mm -hmm. so just be the agent of like hey i'm i'm an expert i i do this so instead of prospecting on thursday I, i'd recommend doing two hours a day at least you may just study the market like know what's going on know where interest rates are guys like these are key things to know when people talk to you about real estate what are interest rates if you guys right now don't know that question to that answer where interest rates are right now you might be like dave that's a that's a uh you know lender question no no you're a real estate expert. That involves everything. So know where rates are. Know where rates are heading. You know, from my market knowledge, I'm heavily in, I invest in real estate personally. Again, it's the best way to grow your money. And if you're an agent, you should really truly believe that. But I know in 2024 that interest rates should drop because every election year, interest rates drop. These are great things to tell people. And these are things people really want to know. 
instead of you just saying you're an agent to everybody and, and acting like a lunatic, you can be, hey guys, I don't know if you knew this, but interest rates are planning on dropping. So if you're looking to refinance your home or buy another home or buy an investment or whatever, you know, call me, I can help you guys out. I have a great connection, but uh, interest rates are planning to drop. Every election year they, they drop. Fed has already, uh, the Federal Reserve, if you guys don't know, has already announced that the interest rates are dropping, like things like that. And uh, touching on a key point, that is you providing value without an immediate benefit to you. And that's how you get business. So, you know, even if somebody wants to refinance their home and you give them the advice of like, you should actually refinance your home instead of uh, sell, you're giving them true value. And they're going to remember that seven years down the line when you, when they do decide to sell or when they want to buy a second home. So whether it benefits you immediately or not, you want to be focused on being, you know, ethical and, and really truly giving them the correct advice. Because again, these are hundreds of thousands of dollars that we help people decide what to do with. So, um, you know, if you're brand new in the agent, again, or brand new in the industry, again, focus on prospecting, building your CRM system, and becoming a real estate expert. It's a couple Google searches, go on Redfin, look at some stuff like where stats are. If you guys don't know where the housing values have gone up in year to date, like you guys should know these things. If you haven't known, they've went up actually. Everybody's talking about how bad the market is. It's actually went up 4% uh, year over year. So these are good things to know when people do say things like that, when they're hearing just from like the news, to be like, hey, actually no, the house values have gone up 4%. Your house value has actually gone up uh, statistically, you know, on average. So key things like that will help you provide value. And I've rambled on uh, long enough there. Do you have any questions on that? Does that all make sense? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. providing value, things Absolutely. like that. No, yeah. it does. That's what I preach. Provide value to everybody, whether it benefits you directly or not. That's like the biggest tip I can give beyond prospecting is simply just be a good, you know, moral human being and provide value, whether it helps you or not. I've actually told people, you know, hey, I know you want to sell right now. I don't think that's the best decision. I would advise you not to hold on to this, wait for this or that or whatever to happen in the, the market. Mm -hmm and then decide to do something. But I advise not to. You you decide, yeah. uh, this is what I'm advising, but they like and trust me way more right. because I'm the one person not money hungry for a few thousand dollars and right. I'm giving them advice for a lifetime of business from them. So simple things like that. Uh, a couple other questions that I've written down, unless you have anything for me no. as of yet. Um, you know, this but business networking. yeah networking's good you know i don't personally do it i so when you guys that's a that's a good thing to touch on when you're first getting into the business there are so many networking of it's insane and i don't person i could be totally wrong and please let me know in the comments if i am wrong if somebody's like dude you're totally wrong here i don't see the benefit in networking with like constantly going to these events with other agents, agents. you're not gonna get too much business from that. The only benefit I see from that is when you do write an offer on these agents' properties that you've met in these events, they do like and trust you now. Like they can put a face and a personality to the name of the offer. That's really the only benefit. And you become like this agent that maybe people are seeing. What you wanna avoid, and I'm sure we've all seen this, is the agent who's getting hammered at the bar at the networking event and like ramble, like that is what no one wants to have. And I'm sure you guys don't need me telling you that, but um, networking, I would I would solely focus on prospecting, go on a few networking events, meet the agents, you know, see who in your local market is the top agent and study them. Like I know in my uh, network, my, or my uh, local, uh, I guess market, our top agents is it's like a list of three. There's the crack, it's the McNeil, um, you know, platinum and stuff. So there's like a few top people and I study and watch what they do every day and what they all have in common is prospecting. I mean, that's what everybody has in common is they focus their business on prospecting and listings. So that's where I've grown my business. Now your market might be different. We're in the same market, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't, I don't really do too much networking. One one a month may, may be good, but there's literally like two or three a week that go on. It's just, it's too intense. Um, this business is, is pretty simple, guys. It's not, 
This is a good key thing. It's not easy. This business is not easy. You got you're self-employed. I'm self-employed. You see how my income is up, down, up, down. It's it's not an easy fun business. Uh, it is fun, but it's not it's not easy. It's very very difficult. But the good news is it's incredibly simple. Like if you work the things that have consistently worked throughout all time, prospecting, outbound prospecting, door knocking, even open houses. If that's your thing, I, not not my thing, but you know pretty girl at an open house, you know, people are going to show up. So like things like that, if that's your thing, do it, but focus on what works. What works is outbound prospecting, outwardly reaching out to people, letting them know you're an agent, providing them value, whether you get the listing or not, eventually you will. Um, when I prospect, just so you know, I, I told you to stick with for sale buyers initially, if you have the opportunity to prospect expires and whatnot, do it. But my main uh, pillars of, of leads, uh, lead sources are FISBOs, for rent by owners, expireds, new and old, um, and past clients. So those are the only things I focus on and I'm able to generate a pretty good income strictly from doing that. So you don't have to overcomplicate the business. And I do like zero marketing. I do YouTube and that's it. So we don't have to overcomplicate this business. It's, it's very simple. Your focus should solely be on generating listing leads and if you do only that and be just a good normal humble human being who's trying to provide value i promise you and, and you guys watching you will be a top agent it's super simple you know just work the things that work the other thing is actually work you know i see people in the office who come in come they go treat this like a job if you have the opportunity where you're not working a second job work it eight hours a day minimum whether that be prospecting six, like whatever you gotta do to fill up eight hours, studying the market for four hours, like I don't care what you guys do, but show up, work at eight hours, and the business will follow. If you focus on the simple things that follow, prospecting, providing value, you know, being that agent of choice. So simple things, difficult, not easy. I'm, I'm here with you all, I'm, I'm in, in the business, but very simple to do. Anything else before we wrap this up? I don't think so. Good. Well, I hope this video provided you value, yeah, um, absolutely. you guys value watching. Again, she's getting her license in three days. So this is like really fresh. If you're a brand new agent looking to revamp your business, or if you're thinking about getting your license, it's a beautiful industry. You just have to simply work it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, link in the description below for my scripts. Uh, my website's got everything on it. Past videos will show you how to prospect efficiently and effectively to get the most amount of uh, money and dollars out of your time. Um, again, thank you guys for watching. No cuts, dude.